The intersection between art and film offers few personalities as intriguing and accomplished as Julian Schnabel. Schnabel became a central figure in the art world in the late 1970s, and his appetite for experimentation helped to re-establish painting as a major force in the American art scene. In the last 15 years, Schnabel has also become an acclaimed film director by creating works that explore the vulnerability, cruelty, and beauty of humanity. In February 2010, Art Gallery of Ontario curator David Mose visited Julian Schnabel's New York studio to plan the exhibition Art and Film, opening in September. While critics often remark upon the painterly qualities of Schnabel's films, few ask this question. How has film impacted his art making? This exhibition examines the influence of film and filmmaking on his work as an artist and explores the symbiotic nature of these two different media in Schnabel's creative practice. I grew up in an atmosphere or an environment that had no film or painting. My parents didn't know anything about painting and they didn't go to the movies that much. It was an escape for me to go to the movies. And so the movies were more real to me than what my life was at home. And when I'd paint or do things like that, I would escape from the ordinariness of what life was like in my parents' house. In 1996, Schnabel made his first feature film, Basquiat a project that grew from a poignant friendship he shared with fellow artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, who had died in 1988 at the age of 27. The film brought to life the scene and the characters of the 1980s New York art world that Schnabel knew so well. And I never thought I was going to be a movie director. But when Jean-Michel died and somebody started to ask me to help them to talk about what a painter's life was. I felt, in a way, like I owed it to him to portray that in the, the right way. I'd been in that basement with him. I'd seen those things, so I didn't have to make something up. I knew my subject. Schnabel convinced film producer John Killick to take a chance on a first-time director. Just watching Julian, paint this movie through that entire process, even in the editing process, when he would add layer upon layer and music upon stock footage and, and just different mixed media until he finally, you know, until we got there. And uh, very similar to watching him work with, uh, with the paintbrush. It's uh, just something that was alive and evolving all throughout the process, constantly getting better until he was done. Julian Schnabel has gone on to make three other feature films, Before Night Falls, The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, and this year's Morale, premiering at the Toronto International Film Festival, all the while never interrupting his robust art-making practice. Julian's fearless. Julian loves to go into it free and without looking at a piece of paper. He wants to look at the room and look into the eyes of the character. And again, because he's so well prepared in a different way, because he feels connected to the, the story and the script and the actors and, and just has an instinctual sort of uh, approach to it. So he's living in the story. He, the shots will happen. I mean, he's used to looking at, at uh, that rectangle all the time when he paints. So he's not worried about figuring out where the camera's going to go. I definitely throw the script away lots of times. Um, and something will invariably happen. You'll be standing in a landscape and you'll notice, or for example in The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, I noticed that the tide went out 500 meters every day. And where there was a stanchion on the beach that was totally exposed, looked like a lifeguard's stand in the daytime. So I took John Dominique Bobby or Matt Yomick and we put him in his wheelchair on top of the stanchion. It looked like the wheelchair was floating in the water, but the, the stand was underneath there. Well, that wasn't scripted. It was just 
know, the obvious thing to do if you talk about a guy saying he was on the shores of loneliness. And um, that stuff happens all the time. The landscape dictates what happens. Whether it's a screen in a movie or whether it's the rectangle, that's the perimeter of your painting, it's an arena where this battle takes place between everything you know and you don't know. And I think that I apply the same system to both things. I don't know what it's going to look like when I'm done. I know how to start. I know how to lean towards a divine light. What I hope for from the show is that people will look at the paintings. Because you can't see paintings in magazines. You can't see paintings in books, really. If you're going to see a bullfight, you need to go there and be in the arena and see what it's like. If you want to see paintings, you need to go there and see them. You have to go up to it and see the way the paint is put on there. When you look at a Caravaggio painting, you walk up to it and you're there with Caravaggio. He is breathing in your ear. He is speaking to you just the way he spoke to somebody that he was standing next to 400 years ago. In film, other things happen like that. You can see people that are dead that are still talking and preserved in a movie. So there's just a universal emotional connection that uh, I think Julian's been able to find. You know, that's the core of the films, the, the emotional connection with the characters. But Julian never stoops to a political, a political correctness. You know, he is not going to say what he's supposed to say. He's going to say what he feels. And it sometimes comes off as being very egocentric. I've found him to actually be the opposite of that, to be scared in a good way, showing the actors all of the confidence and all of the work that he's done to get there, but still scared in the sense that he respects the difficulty of what he's taken on, the difficulty of painting a 20-foot painting. If he thought it was easy, it wouldn't turn out to be very good. If he thought making a movie was something that he could just do in his sleep, they wouldn't turn out to be very good either. But he has great respect for the challenge of making good work. In a movie, you've got more or less two hours in a conventional film to tell a story. But the story is something that doesn't necessarily need to fit inside the rectangle. It's got to go beyond the screen in a way, and maybe when you get finished with the movie, the movie's not over. It, l it lives inside of you the way the experience of looking at a painting lives inside of you. It forms who you are. But I love to paint and it's also given me the freedom to make the films that I want to make. I think ultimately it's about freedom, the whole thing. Freedom. You put something down, you don't have to know the answer, just put it out there and have the freedom to do that. Nobody's stopping you from doing that. That's a huge privilege. I've been very privileged. The exhibition Julian Schnabel Art and Film continues until January 2nd, 2011.